How are you doing? Welcome to live stream number 166. I am just a few minutes early here. You should uh, hopefully be able to now see that there is a over there. There's a timer on the screen. If uh, you're watching the recording uh, of this video, I don't blame you. Fast forward uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, that clock will uh, count down and that's when we're going to jump right into today's topic. What is called an intro to the generative design workflow? Uh, so uh, this is kind of like piggybacking on a couple of other live streams that I've done. And we talked about, I made a, uh, a live stream on understand generative designs. So we're going to jump into that. I can see we already got people in here. We got Isaac in here. Good to see you. Chad is in here. Aaron. Uh, good to see you. Doing great, man. How how about you? Hope you're doing. Hope you're doing that too. Um, we got uh, Freddy Gosner is in here. Evening, and Eduardo from Argentina. Absolutely appreciate it, Michael. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, to join these live streams. Like I said, if you're watching the recording, I don't blame you. Just fast forward another minute and a half or so. Uh, this is just. I just want to have an opportunity to say thank you to everybody. Um, and uh, like yesterday, somebody actually asked a question right before and I had an opportunity to show it uh, doing the live stream, which is awesome. Uh, Simon is here uh, from Scotland. That's absolutely awesome. Sean, uh, August, appreciate it. All you guys really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, so today's topic, we're going to jump in um, into this generative design again, but um, I wanted to do it a little bit differently um, because I actually want to kind of show the workflow um, and hopefully, I mean, this is not going to be like the big shiny Cadillac awesome thing, but I just wanted to kind of help uh, if you are interested in this uh, generative design and there's a lot of interest for it. Uh, I just thought that maybe it could be useful to spend eh, 10, 15 minutes uh, on that. Uh, Tommy's here, Randy, uh, Jessica's here. Um, absolutely appreciate you guys taking it from Australia is here. Really appreciate you guys taking the time. 54 people already and we're just not even, we're not even on top of the hour. <laughs> You guys are the best, really appreciate it. Um, so uh, yes, this generative design, uh, this button that uh, you have seen on my screen uh, is now um, part of the ultimate package. It has to, you have to be uh, bought the ultimate package uh, to get uh, the generative design. It's so brand new, um, I'm still learning it, um, but I thought it could be cool to kind of take you through, through that. So, um, Oh, there we go. Jeff says that Autodesk will be there in a few hours to show the generative design tool. So that's absolutely awesome. Well, with that countdown, let me just, uh, let's just, let's get into it here. So uh, let me just get rid of the clock here. Should always be good. And we're good to go. Hey, everybody. And thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. It is number 166. Today's topic is an intro to the generative design workflow. What I really wanted to do was I wanted to kind of like piggy bank on uh, the live stream we did on, well, it was originally an airfoil that then became a airplane wing rib. Um, we did some simulation with it and then somebody suggested um, in, the, in, in, the, in the comment area, it could be fun to see that thing go into generative design. So I thought I would combine it all into to that. That's what we're gonna cover today. I don't know. I'm going to try to do it in like 15 minutes or so. Don't want to waste too much of your time, but really just hope that, uh, that, you find, that you find these live streams a little bit useful. And this, I think, could be interesting. Even if you don't have the generative design uh, button in your screen right now, um, I just think like the thought process uh, of going through a, um, a design. So, appreciate it. My name is Lars Christensen, and uh, yep, I really appreciate it. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Let's get in. Uh, let's get into fusion. So this is what we we kind of started out with um, a few. I think it was Monday a week ago. Uh, so we had originally created a uh, an airfoil. What is kind of like the outside shape of a uh, of a a a, a wing. And we had used uh, online data to create that inside of Fusion. That goes a while back. But then we talked about how we could chop up the design and actually turn it into uh, one of these ribs. So normally there's like multiple of these ribs inside an airplane wing. They can rather be created on wood. In our case, are uh, creating them out of aluminium. 
aluminium. I'm gonna try to say it better this time. Uh, <laughs> and um, and actually, the, what I wanna get at today was, you see how I kind of lightweighted it here with some, some holes in it? Um, where did I get that from? Well, honestly, I got it from a picture. I looked online, uh, airplane rips, and um, guess what? There was something that looked very similar to this. And uh, you know what? This is kind of how we many times do things when it comes to um, to design, right? We we use our best our best idea on on something, and then we go with that. Well, how can we turn? How can we make this better? How can we make this a better uh, design? And one of the ones could be to turn it into something like this instead. So going from uh, this design, what um, you know is this airfoil we had Monday a week ago, but into uh, one that actually looks a little bit different. And some of the main differences, just you know, if you're watching this on a phone or something, is that um, first of all. Uh, you can see that we kind of like ended up getting three different legs in here. Um, but this area here is a lot thinner. So uh, in, the, in the original design, I went with uh, about 20 millimeters uh, thickness in here. 20 millimeters right there. You can see that. And if we go into this part, um, you will see that um, this one here is closer to five. 5.1 millimeters. So substantially thinner and I used generative design to uh, to get me to this place. Now, I know that this model is not uh, maybe when you're looking at it, the, the you know, the I don't know, the most, um, you know, sexy or whatever you want to use a word term. Uh, but the, the biggest difference I think in it is that if we look at this original design uh, made it out of aluminum, and we go in and we look at this body here um, and we look at the properties for this aluminum piece. We can see that this piece weighs about six kilos, 6,000 uh, 6, grams, so, so six kilos, where this other version you're looking at here, if we're going to look at that, is... Um, is a little bit under four kilos, so we shaved off. Um, we shaved off some weight. Now you might say, "Well, that's that's all good. Um, you know, no big deal. You just made walls thinner and, and and looked at it until it was thinner." But if you remember from from Tuesday, yesterday, a week ago, we did simulation on these part on this part. So on this part here. Um, we actually went into the simulation workspace inside of Fusion. And everything's gonna show you kind of like works within the Fusion workspace. So after I had designed this part, I was kind of questioning like what, like how strong is this part? Now I've had some aviation expert telling me that uh, my loads are wrong uh, and doesn't simulate normally on an airplane. <laughs> but it's my live stream and I don't know better. <laughs> So I'm gonna kind of continue with these loads, even though that, um, you know, I'm trying to show you the tools inside of Fusion, not necessarily how to design a, a wing. But we ran a simulation study on this uh, last Tuesday, and I talked about, I always used to be very, um, um, very cautious when it came to simulation, until I realized that s safety factor is really the only thing that you should really, really, uh, stay focused on and what we did to this part was we applied we, we fixed the top of the wing what again some people told me that had some corrections to that but let's just play with that we fixed the top of the wing and then we loaded two loads underneath it uh one here uh on the on this side underneath here um about a thousand uh, pounds force all if we're doing it in newtons it's about uh, 44,482 newtons, if you want that. 44,000 uh, um, newtons on the bottom, on this section. And then on this other load, we applied about 500 uh, pounds, or in newtons, it will be about 2,000 pounds. Um, and, and when we went in and we looked at that, uh, those results uh, inside of Fusion, we saw 
that uh, we got about a safety factor of five, what means that this thing, if, if, if you didn't watch that one, you can go back and watch it, but um, safety factor of one is generally where we're saying that's right when the pot would fail. So normally you would go with a safety factor of either two or three. That means we are almost making the pot double or, or three times uh, to the breaking point of the pot. Now, when we did uh, this part here uh, with the with the 44,000 newtons underneath it, we saw we were actually very safe. We were about five uh, um, safety factor of five. So this this was was a, a, a good stiff design. Well, I thought that okay, so that's all good. But could we make this design better? Could we make it lighter? Um, could we make it this? And that is where I used uh, that generative uh, design button here uh, to create that. Now, I left a link down in the description area of this video to uh, the first generative design video live stream I created, what is called Understand Generative Design. That will give you more of the clicks. Today, I, will, I wanted to take you through the entire kind of like a workflow on how I got from, um, from the, the model here uh, we originally created to kind of like this more, um, better, lighter model. So inside of um, generative design, let me open that up here. Um, if you if you remember, if you saw me doing the generative design, the generative design works a little bit differently than what we what we normally design things with. So what I generated, and I use Fusion, I'm going to show you them in a second. I generated a. Um, a preserved region, but it's kind of like the outer ring of the airfoil. That is my preserve. I know I want to keep that, but then I need to generate some stuff inside of, of, of here. That's what I want uh, generative design to do. So um, to kind of control that, you create something called an obstacle region. And I created an obstacle that was outside, almost like a shell outside uh, the uh, preserved region, what is in green, um, and it's maybe easier to show you actually in Fusion what I did. So what I did here inside of Fusion was I kind of, the green, like I talked about, that this green here is that outer shell of our original one here, because I know that that's not going to change, but it's in between that needs to change. And, um, and, and what I used then was I kind of created uh, these three generative, um, uh, these, uh, sorry, these three obstacles in here. Um, so, turn these off here. So, one um, was kind of this outer shell. That is not really interesting. Uh, then I created uh, kind of these, these covers that, that held in the inside. So, if I go in here, and I do a section analysis from the inspection, uh, then you can kind of see that I, I hollowed out the inside of it. And that's what generative design is going to use to build that. So I brought that in to generative design like that as a model. Um, and we added our forces just like I, I showed before. So here's the Newton 44,000 down here, 2,000 down the bottom. Um, and then I ran in and I kind of started letting... Um, Whoops, and I kind of let um, generative design create what it needed to create. You can actually see it's still working on a couple of, of things here. Uh, now, what becomes interesting inside of generative design um, when I started getting these results, and I, what I like to use is this plot up here. And this plot here shows you, I actually, so our original model was made out of aluminum. But I thought, might as well just run one out of Inconel and Titanium because I kind of like are looking at the minimum factor of safety, what I just talked about. So we're looking for something. I ran this one at th minimum of three. Now, remember, our original model was five, but three would probably be okay. Um, and then a low mass. So this thing here kind of plots out uh, the different materials. So green, again, is Titanium. So I'm kind of looking down this quadrant down here. Again, mass is at the bottom and minimum factor is, 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 is on the long gate. So you can see that we do have some options with um, 
titanium inconel looks like that's kind of out of the reach um but aluminum is clearly the the winner in here uh, but here comes an interesting thing so this one here is the low is, is is about five minimum effective of five what was what we wanted and it's the lowest on mass uh so this is the one i'm most interested in so i'm going to click here and select that one and go in and look at it now here is something very important to share to you about uh, generative design, and that is that generative design is not necessarily going to give you um, the one result. It's going to give you multiple results that you can then work with and make your design decision from. And that's kind of the beauty of, of this uh, generative design. Um, so if you're looking over here on the on the right side, um, you will see that we can confirm that this is the one made out of 661 aluminum. Now, this is the print direction, um, what means that um, in the side of general design, um, there's a couple of different things we can do. There's one that is the topology optimization, and other software have that, where you kind of like just a cutting way material in here. But Fusion X will also let you do the manufacturing uh, aspect, and this is a, a 3D printed uh, part now I knew that when I was gonna model this one up that I was not just gonna like if you're looking at this shape here um, 3d print this out of aluminum looks like that is the best solution uh, however you will see if you look on my model that this is clearly uh, manufacturable I knew that I wanted something that I could still make in a mill uh, but I still wanted to use generative design to kind of come up with something so uh, one of the things to know is that down here at the bottom, uh, you kind of have all the different iterations that, that it used. So if I scroll back here at iteration 30, it's just gonna take a second to load here, doing this live, we kind of get, you know, a certain variation of this. We can turn on kind of like the model view here. And if you're looking over here to the right, iteration 30 has a, a mass of six kilos, um, an effect of safety um, of five. So it's a pretty high factor of safety, um, but I can also see that there's a lot of crazy kind of shapes in here. Um, so you can start exploring the next one. So I move to the next one, 31, and see that one coming in. Now it actually took away more material, but it also made less of a factor of safety perfectly where we want to be around three um, but you get an opportunity to kind of explore uh, different options in here um, and eventually when I was looking through here I found this one and you can see there's a little mark down right down here in the bottom that showed you that I actually downloaded this one I took this version because I thought this one was kind of interesting with kind of three small legs a pretty big area um, but when I looked over here um, I could see that the mass was very low now I knew that I would make these legs a little bit fatter than this um, but it's within the, the factor of safety so what I did was I saved this one out now inside of fusion you get uh, two options you can uh, inside of general design you can export it out as a solid model or as an STL model and I think most people would probably think, why not saving it out as a, uh, as a solid model? But you know, I knew that because I wanted to make this manufacturable, I don't have a, a metal 3D printer, uh, and, I, and that's not maybe what I wanted to do with this process. Um, I'm gonna make this more manufacturable. I just downloaded the STL file because it is lighter, and I talked about STL files yesterday. So when I brought this in, I actually, you will see, I can turn on the STL file right here. So I brought that into Fusion, just like as I showed yesterday in, uh, in the live stream yesterday, how you bring them in. So I just brought this in and I borrowed uh, that original outer ring here, okay? And then I started looking at the mesh to kind of see, um, I can turn the opacity down a little bit here maybe. I started looking at, at this model, and hopefully this shows up, and I mean, it placed a leg out here at the side, so I decided to create this more manufacturable uh, leg right here, 
in there. You can see I also created a little section down there. Um, and then I just kind of like made this full out here. But of course, like I said earlier, the whole thing in the design process was how thin I could make I could make this wall. Uh, that is really what kind of what kind of changes um, changes everything, right? Uh, in here is how thin this is versus how thick. Like this first thing, first thing here was was twenty uh, millimeters, and now we are down to five. Now I still, after I created this, because I knew I was going to make it a little bit, I, I, the legs here was going to be was going to be f bigger. Um, just from a manufacturing standpoint. Um, again, I knew that I was gonna definitely, so there was four kilos out of the mass. I knew that, uh, that I was going to make it, um, make it heavier, uh, but we made it under four kilos uh, here compared to the original one that was uh, over six uh, kilos, right? So there was a, a substantial weight, um, you know, I don't know, what is that? 25% uh, weight from going from one to the other. And then of course, I also took this one um, and I took it into uh, simulation workspace and ran uh, the same forces on this, part, on this part here. Whoops, that's the wrong one, this one. Um, I ran a simulation study uh, on this afterwards um, just to, to double check that after I kind of added my things, and you will see that um, we are within the free way, 3.5 um, in here. So that was what I kind of wanted to show today. I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, this generative design. Uh, and, sh and again, if you look down in the description area of this video, you will see, um, you will see that um, that first video I created on the GE bracket. So if you want to dig into all the different settings inside of generative design, inside of here, like all the different settings in here, definitely recommend you go and, and, and watch that. But just to kind of like recap um, for anybody who came in kind of late. So being in, in a design workspace where I modeled this one up, had no really idea about what this meant, I could right click on it and see that it was about six kilos um, heavy, right? Um, I ran a simulation study on it and I just ran a static simulation study. That was uh, yesterday, Tuesday, a week ago. Uh, so if you go and watch that one, uh, you, you, you can see that, uh, that video. And I, app I applied the 44,000 Newtons with the 2000 on the back. And we kind of got a, a minimum factor of safety of, of five, that was good. But then um, instead of just being like, okay, I guess that's good enough, um, bringing it into the general design workspace, explore uh, different options in here, looking at, you know, how can I, I make this part better? And then still not just taking what comes out of generative uh, design as like gospel and be like, oh, that's the only way. No, I actually played around. Again, you can you can go in and look at uh, the different iterations of the part uh, in here. So here's like the one I actually ended up using, but I didn't use this one. This would have been perfect for, for you know, metal printing. I used uh, this one here uh, because I thought that looked more closer to what I wanted, converted it in to um, this by bringing it in as a mesh and make a more manufacturable part. Still, we have now decreased the weight of this part uh, by 25% or so from six kilos down to uh, a little bit under four kilos um, and still confirmed in the simulation workspace uh, that we are still within the minimum factor of, uh, of three, three and a half. Um, so that was what I was hoping to show today. Hope that this kind of like gave you an idea about how you can work with this. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, like I said earlier, I am learning um, in this whole generative design uh, space too. So I'm definitely going to, I'm going to work on, on, on making other things. And I know that this part maybe wasn't uh, the most flashy part. I can probably come up with 
something that is a lot more like the, even I would say the GE bracket. If you look at the uh, um, the understanding of design uh, video I did a few weeks ago, uh, that probably looks a little bit more um, aesthetic looking. Uh, but I think that this was a good practical way to kind of staying within Fusion and take it through that whole whole workflow and uh, and kind of get a good idea about where you are with your with your design. So you're not just modeling things up on the screen and think that hopefully it, it, it works out in the real world. That was what I was planning on showing today. Tomorrow, we're gonna, I'm gonna answer some of your questions uh, via email. That was supposed to be Wednesday, but I got the week messed up because we had Monday off. I hope you appreciate this. I uh, hope it was useful. Get a little bit more. We're gonna dig more and more into this generative design uh, get to see a little bit more uh, of it as we're going through. That was all I was planning on showing today. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. If you're inside of uh, the live stream chat, I'm gonna jump in there and say hi to everybody. So until tomorrow, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much. Take care, folks.